The sitar has certain ornaments which are specific to it. Sitar has certain limitations as well as certain strong points. Very often I notice when I go to play for music composers for their recordings or for films or whatever, uh, that when, uh, when a music director or composer writes a part for the sitar, some of them are very well aware of this instrument and therefore they are able to write parts which are very conducive to playing uh, you know, uh, on the sitar. Before I get into this subject further, I would also like to mention that an integral part of my training has been this integration of this uh, this uh, vocal aspect with the instrumental aspect. Because I was fortunate uh, uh, to first of all uh, learn a lot of these techniques from my father, Pandit Partho Chatterjee, who has trained under Nikhil Banerjee. Uh, and subsequently from Ali Akbar Khan Sahib, who gave me detailed training in Alap Jod. But when I came to learn from Pandit Ajoy Chakravarti, then I was able to understand a lot of the intricate vocal nuances and how uh, uh, that could seamlessly blend with a typical genius of the instrument, of, of the, the particular nuances of the sitar because he he had a great understanding of of instrumental music also and the integration of laikari or the integration of uh, using rhythm you know in the, which was specific to the to the sitar so one needs to understand for instance this is called a krintan this is not sung this is specific so when a music composer or director is writing a sitar part If they would write a part like this, then it would be a typical sitar part. On the other hand, if you were to take a part like this, for instance, These are typical sitar parts. This will be a vocal part. When I am doing um, this whole chromatic glide is coming from guitar. This is a very typical guitar phrase. When they come, it's called a grace note, which is used in Western music. So we are actually assimilating a wide variety of things and giving our final output. We are even assimilating in a very, uh, um, uh, and I'm sorry I'm digressing a little bit from the subject, but uh, it's also related to the instrument because it's it's an instrument which we can't play chords. We can only play two note chords like. But there is an underlying sense of harmony, even in our phrasing. So. So we are essentially playing something which is akin to arpeggios uh, and at the back of our mind in intelligent phrasing there will be a harmonic tension resolution like if one phrase is So, the technique of the instrument is also changing a lot, but there are certain peculiar sitar phrases. There are some phrases in every instrument. Uh, also, the right hand, if you see. What we 
you say da 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 so this is right hand technique dra da 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 dra these kind of things are which are typical sitar ladi ladgu thau ladal pet these are typical sitar kind of phrases which are meant to be played on the sitar so i think as a listener also one requires a, a slightly in depth knowledge of each and every facet technical facet of the instrument to really understand what is the individual brilliance of the instrument 